We are live. Welcome to this week's episode of Sexually Speaking with myself, Keisha Clark, and normally I would be saying, and my sister goddess, Rhonda Burns, and today I get to say, and my brother God, which sounds kind of interesting. <laughs> I could be your brother goddess. That would my work. fellow deities, my brother goddess. That's kind of fun and, and unique. Um, Mr. It's Alan Jones. <laughs> good morning, Alan. <laughs> Good morning, or good afternoon for me, but good morning to everyone over there, because yes. I know you're all five hours or six hours, whatever it is behind me. Yeah, in the States, we're a little earlier in our day than you are in the UK, so how does it get even funner? Um, so today, we are playing with myself and Alan, and we're going to be dancing around with the topic of lust, talking about lust for life. And if it is your first time joining us live or seeing this as a replay, um, thank you for coming by. Thank you for participating in this conversation. And I wonder what a conversation about lust and all of the energies that that is and can be and may not be and couldn't ever be and always has been, um, can show up for us today. What awareness do we have? What do we know about lust? And that is part of what we play with on Sexually Speaking, not just the energy of lust. We're actually celebrating all things sex and the sex of everything. And we like to say we're having unconventional conversations to unfuck your life. So <laughs> if you're on board for that, you might enjoy this next hour. And mm -hmm. if, if uh, interesting words are, are not fun for you, this might not be the video you want to watch so if, yeah, if you want sorry, to go some now. we totally are fine with that and we fully appreciate um you taking care of you honoring whatever choice you want to make with this um because yes. how much do we get ourselves twisted and tangled about sex and all of the things to do with sex oh yeah <laughs> just a little bit. There's only a slight bit of insanity around that topic. Um, and so especially when we get into lust and talking about things like lust, I think probably many of us um, were exposed to that word from someone's interesting point of view that it was not a good thing, that it was actually something dirty or something wrong. So I'm going to read our little show right up here real quick. And um, yeah, so we're actually talking about lust for life. And this could be everything that is included in life and living. So are you willing to play with the energy of lust? Have you ever lusted after someone? Or have you ever been lusted after by someone? Do you have a lust for life? Or are you trying to avoid or deny the energy of lust? So this week, we're going to play with diving into the possibilities of lust, whether we're lusting after a person or lusting for life or something else altogether <laughs> different and fun, and see what awarenesses show up, what energies uh, start to present themselves, and what does it create if we were willing to play more with lust. So Alan, before we dive way in, do you want to just say a few words about you for anybody who might not have heard about you. I know there probably are two or three people on the planet who don't know you yet. <laughs> it's surprising as it seems. Yeah. Uh, so oh, what can I, I really should prepare for this a bit more because I'm always, <laughs> I always kind of, I'm thrown by this kind of conversation. Tell me about yourself. Like, oh. So, um, I have it's a not friend. a dating site. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like to walk on the beach with the wind in my hair. No, I have got any. Um, so, yeah, so I'm a, a coach and a facilitator and just, I, I like to play with different energies. I like to get curious about stuff um, and I love asking questions. So, uh, yeah, I have a radio show which airs on Mondays called The Playground of Possibilities and I, as I, said, I love to play with where we can go with stuff and looking at, this is why I love being on here on this show because we get to talk about yeah, unconventional ways of kind of bypassing what we've all bought as real and true and this is the way we should be. Yeah. So I was delighted when I was asked to be a part of this. So yeah, I'm, I've been coaching for 20, how many, 25 years. So oh, yeah. Cool. I, I yeah. like asking questions. Yes. Yes. We love to play with questions and I love to get to play with you. Um, for any of you who don't know, you might also have seen Alan and myself on a, another venture that we collaborate. It's called Choosing Beyond Beyond and we mm. love to play with more questions there as well. Um, yeah. Choosing Beyond is all about going beyond the place where we oh. make ourselves stupid or we don't let ourselves know what we know. And a part of that really is a part of this conversation as well. How many places do we stop ourselves, especially with an energy like lust, yeah. um, that we just, we, we stick ourselves in a beyond and we don't choose to really explore that and see what is that energy if we were willing to just 
play with some questions and really see what it is for us. And it could be for us what it isn't for anyone else. And what if that could be okay? So, so everybody watching, what does lust mean to you? Mm. Wow. <laughs> it's such a funny energy lust because in some ways, um, it can be totally acceptable when you talk about a lust for life. Mm -hmm. You know, he has a real lust for life. He has a real lust for fun. You know, when it's kind of, you can have a lust for kind of positive things. But the minute you start to lust after money, lust after success, lust after lust, after, you know, after kind of anything that in, in any way has some kind of judgment attached to it, it then becomes bad and wrong. So yeah. it's not okay to lust after somebody else. It's not okay to lust after success. It's not okay to lust after money. And I think there's a kind of a misidentification there of what lust actually means. Yeah. For me, in that context, when you're lusting after something that you haven't got, there's a real lack energy and a... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Kind of a longing. Yeah, there is this longing and this need and this, I will, you know, almost like um, to the detriment of everything else, I will. Yeah, aching, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And there is that. And when you have a lust for life, for me, that's, that's, there's just a different space to that energy. I have a lust. And what if you can have that for money? I have a lust with money, which is I love to play with money. And I can feel the resistance there. It's like, how can anyone lost after money? It's like, so let's just invite people who are listening to, if you were to let go of all those judgments you have about lusting after money and being, you know. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Right. <laughs> and in that it's, space. Like underneath it, there's something fun. Do yeah. Do you perceive that? Yeah. What, so yeah, like what you were, you were, just about to say something else and I'm sorry I jumped in there oh, well no because my mind's going all over the place because the <laughs> other thing that, the other thing that kind of pops in my head is I read a lot of science fiction or I used to read a lot of science fiction fantasy I, not so much now but um my face is always buried in a science fiction book and one of them they would talk about a lusty wench and it, again it wasn't necessarily a bad thing it was she's kind of a fun playful probably a bit sexy um a bit daring and just because she's a lusty wench it doesn't mean make her a prostitute or a whore mm -hmm. and again there is that or if she's lust there's, there's a lot of assumption about lusty if you lust after something sexually it means that you're seedy or that you know the thing that you're lusting after if someone is lusty then they are a prostitute and 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 why do yeah. we make that wrong yeah isn't that interesting and there's kind of a fine line between where, where you go into like the lechery and the seediness and the not desirable. And yeah. yet the energy of lust can be like this really bold and hearty and very generative energy. Um, there's so many like very close cousins to that energy. I think that it's, it's easy to get kind of get it all mucked up in the mix, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and what, like, so yeah, that's an excellent point about like, we, we, talk about in a really kind of um, admirable way the lust for life but then there's like this line we cross when it turns into a lust for any other person or object or or something you know a, a, a target a goal or something a dream that people have um, that is fascinating to me and and I get that that creates like this traffic jam sort of energy is that like a tangible? It's okay to lust for the intangible, but it's not okay to lust for the tangible. I wonder. <laughs> because you can have a lust for life, which is intangible. It, it, success can be wow. quite, quite tangible because you'll, you know, you'll, you'll get a business or you'll make lots of money or you'll control people or a lust for power. Ah, Ooh. there it is. He has a real lust for power. And there's such a bastardization. So in the chat room there, Eleanor was talking about what if lust I is... I love that, Eleanor. And yeah, I get that. It's like, and, and, and the thing for me is where we refuse to acknowledge an energy that we're being or that we have available to us, we use it against ourselves. That's the thing. Yeah. So where are we lusting after limitation? 
Ooh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Scramble. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. That's that's just wow. drive my brain. I don't know about you. <laughs> Where are we lusting after limitation? Oh my goodness! You know, um, yeah, that's sort of like the it's the mind fuck. And yeah. how much do we do ourselves that way? How much are we fucking our minds to that that really kind of keeps us from our knowing? It keeps us from what we are aware of. Which, like, I think for many of us how many of us really are aware of the generativeness the generativeness of lust say that 12 times <laughs> well it's almost like there are lower and, harmonics and higher di- harmonics of and this is not to say higher and lower is one is better than the other it's right, just right. it's almost like you know um feeling and perceiving are, are a higher harmonic and a, and a lower harmonic neither of them is wrong they, ju- they just are and i wonder if there are different harmonics to the energy of um <laughs> it's funny I looked at Larry's name it's like wonder if there are higher and lower Lyle, uh, harmonics of Larry uh, <laughs> that's really interesting what, what are you doing Larry? Larry know about um, lust <laughs> what do you know about lust Larry <laughs> lusty Larry <laughs> anyway sorry apologies um, so uh, the higher harmonics of lust and the lower harmonics of lust you know what if lust in its base form is that that kind of primal just desire for something and you know a high is there even a high harmonics oh, i just trying to over intellectualize it i really i get there's something about this tangible and intangible like that's yeah. really kind of bubbling um it's like a way that we've constructed to contain a sexual energy yeah like we all did. of these rules we've placed on sexual energies right those energies of generativeness and creation and healing and expression and expansion um or that can be mm. um and we've invented many many ways and rules to try to contain those energies <clears throat> and what do we know about when you try to contain an energy very much like you were just saying when we're trying to avoid it we end up or deny it we end up using it against us most often um many of us that is um i've certainly done (laughs) Mm -hmm. it's not fun for our bodies um it's not been fun for my body when i've chosen that Mm. so so i i thought this was interesting i it kind of feels like let's maybe go here too and pull this into the mix um of course i went to etymology online because you know i love to do that (laughs) so to lust as a verb um, it says uh, it's from around the 12th century and um, wow it's to wish to desire eagerly and from lust as a noun absorbing or replacing the older verb of the old English listan which we'll get into that in just a minute because I found that very interesting um, it went into to please or to delight it's a sense of to have an intense especially sexual desire for or after um, and that was first attested in the 1520s um, in a biblical usage and then lust as a noun Uh, from Old English, desire, appetite, inclination, pleasure, sensuous appetite, from the Proto-Germanic lustus, I probably just completely butchered those words, and there's a few more of them, Um, again, with pleasure, desire, Um, let's see, to be eager, wanton, or unruly. (laughs) Mary Gay's the wanton, she's a wanton... (laughs) Lust. No, yeah, that's playful. Where... So it's interesting that we have playful, lustful, wanton, unruly, like all of these energies of, for me, like what that brings up is our inability. It's something that cannot be controlled. And, yeah. and it's, you know, all of these ways we try to control these energies of creation. Um, what are we aware of that we could actually be choosing and creating? I think that's a great question, um, and I, I, you know, I, I, I really, it's like where are we avoiding the energy of lust, in that, it, and then it becomes almost like one of those um, boxing gloves in a in a box, 
you know, like <laughs> on the spring. And so you're kind of, you push it in and you push the lid down and it's just, it's so tight and you're getting tighter and tighter until eventually you're, this is you keeping it contained, keeping it contained until eventually smack, it comes out and the energy that you've been trying to suppress smacks you on and you get a black eye or knocks you out. And you're like, yeah. wow, okay. So what if you just, what if this whole need to make lust wrong is that compression and contraction, which then then forces it to come out in some other way that perhaps isn't the most fun or greatest contribution to our lives or to people around us. You know, it's really interesting actually. Um, and this is probably going to push a few buttons in people, but Hey, I was it. watching this program about pedophiles or pedophiles as you call them in the States. And what this guy was saying was he, he's a kind of a self-confessed, he finds young people attractive and for, in this discussion yeah i guess he lusts after them he said he's never ever touched a child and he never would mm -hmm. but the more stress that people are put under the more they're hounded the more they're kind of put in the press it's actually the stress that that in some ways kind of is almost like the suppression of you know the boxing gloves so they end up yeah. actually kind of committing acts against children when they are suffering from more stress. Wow. So what he's saying is there are lots of people who are attracted to younger people, but they were, there is no chance of them ever doing it unless someone kind of pushes it out there and they start getting hounded. And, and I'm not making excuses for this. this is not saying right. failure is right. This is just what, and this, there, there's a, a, um, a professor in America who's actually done all this research around it. And she was saying the same thing. She just basically wow. said it was a fascinating program of when we stress ourselves, the energies that we be like lust can come out in a bastardized way that is really not helpful. So rather than, um, what's the word I'm looking for, kind of make it really bad and wrong, there's a word for it, but I can't think what it is, evilizing it. What if, what if we just kind of embrace that energy? Okay, so how could I use this to the advantage of everyone? What energy is this that I'm experiencing yes. with lust that I can actually create something greater in the world? Yeah, there is that demoralization of certain energies and certain ways that we feel like these energies create feelings for us right like so have you ever lusted after someone oh god all the time every right? day yeah. <laughs> I, I can remember like i think you know there were different like at different age levels there were different ways that it showed up but like you know probably one of the most obvious for me is when i was in high school um and I don't know if junior high, but definitely in high school. I mean, I was in my teens. Um, you know, the whole thing with the rock stars, you know, um, there were several of them that I would have traveled across a, a continent or two to, to follow them and, and even get a, you know, for the chance to sleep with them at the time. That's what I thought, you know, would be wonderful. Oh my gosh. And I would watch them perform for hours and I would watch videos of them. And I would, it's like, there was this infatuation. There was this something else. And there was a lusting, like I was very turned on by these people and who they were being and the energies that they were being. And, and then like, there's other contexts that it it's made not okay. You know, um, when it's fan worship, uh, it seems to be okay <laughs> to a point. And, but when, you know, if like if you go into a restaurant and you see someone who is just amazingly, like the energy of them just completely waves at you, turns you on, lights you up, totally gets your attention. Um, it's not okay to allow some of that energy to move, you know? I mean, and, and granted each of us chooses our actions differently, um, you know, when, when those energies start to move. And for some of us, it's more awkward and we don't know what to do. And for others of us, we've kind of like learned how to move that energy in a particular way or in a, in a way that is not quite so obviously not socially appropriate, you know? So, so with, um, if I, if I really kind of play with the energy that that I'm aware of that I have one of the times I have actually lusted after someone. Um, yeah, I can say that, and I love um, 
what is that Eleanor that shared that she said I overeat and drink when the stress energy comes up for me um, yeah we all tend to go into a particular energy um, when we have that pressure or when things are being projected at us um, when we're in that challenging intensity kind of yeah. situation um, so what how could we be using those energies in a different way how could we be moving those energies in a different way what I get from the whole stress energy, it's a couple of things that kind of comes up for me there. One of them is usually it's, it's an energy that we're suppressing. So we are containing it. And stress can often come as well from the thoughts that we are aware of. So, you know, if you change your thoughts, would you be stressed? Even you know, to the point, are the thoughts even yours? So Ellen, I was talking about she eats and over drinks when she's... Um, overeats and overdrinks when she's in stress energy and you know and I, I put in the chat room you know it's usually when I do that is when I want to suppress my awareness of something it's like where have we decided that the awareness is more painful you know it's just like if I have that awareness that's actually going to be painful for me so I'd rather not have that awareness well there's a judgment there mm -hmm. so what judgment are we using to create the stress we're choosing if you had no judgment of anything would you ever be stressed Ooh, I like that. And, you know, with that whole stress energy, um, with the whole lusting, if you if you really feel a desire to have, you know, kind of for something in your life that and you're suppressing it, that's where frustration comes from. And that's when it's going to come out and explode. So, for instance, yeah, there is that. Um, if you look at business, you know, people kind of having a real desire to have a fun business and they suppress lust energy, which is that desire, that kind of creation energy, the fun energy, the playful energy. If you suppress all of that in your business, it, it potentially will come bursting out at those times. And I see it on Facebook where people are, and for me, that's lust energy out of the way where people are at, um, posting, 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 come to this, come to this, come to this. That's almost for me, like <laughs> you know, you've been suppressing that it's almost like desire becomes um uh desperation mm. yeah it's like energies can can they go to their opposite alternative sort of like that's yeah. that's it's not quite the word but that's the energy that i get it's like it it goes through this intensity and then it becomes something that is the non-generative form of it and where do we cut off that lust energy so that to the point where eventually we do become desperate to release it and that i guess goes back to the whole pedophile thing you know maybe they have this desire for children which they which they can live with that doesn't but the minute they try to suppress it because somebody might find out or somebody might chuck a brick through their window or you know whatever it is might you know might be a rapist same thing for rapists you know people yeah it's like we make it something that we can't have yeah and the more we do that, the more desperate we become so that eventually it's almost like, you know, the pinball machine. You pull it back, you pull it back, you pull it back until eventually, bang, you know, the ball comes yeah. in and out. Yeah. And if we were allowed ourselves to express, because lust doesn't mean for me that you desperately want to jump someone's bones. Yeah. It, that, that desire so for creation. Yeah. 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 Wow. <clears throat> so this is interesting because I, I, this feels like the time to really add this to the mix is the, the old English word listan actually means list as L I S T. Right. Uh, which is a list to make a list of the, of, you know, like a list of your targets, a list of things you desire, a list of, of your, your dreams. And, and that word really, when I read that, I was like, Wow. Um, so it is. Um, <laughs> so you make a list. So your, your lust list. Yeah. Let's see. Let me go to the, to the cross reference here real quick. Um, number four. Uh, so to be pleased, to list, L-I-S-T. It's another, it's one of the tenses of the verb form, the verb, when the word is used as a verb. Um, the, to be pleased, desire, 
um, as an intransitive, a sense now archaic from the mid 12th century, um, to please, to desire, uh, to please or cause pleasure or desire, to provoke longing. And and I thought that that was interesting that it it's 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 used as a verb, um, but the spelling of list was if it's used as a noun is like these these things you desire you're making a list of something you desire so there wow. it has to do with our desiring it's like i guess that's its close cousin um and i found that fascinating um given that desire is something that we try very much not to let ourselves do here mm. well you can't because if you lust after something you can never have it's almost like lust is a waste of time lust is where you've already decided for many people lust is where you've decided it's something you can't have i've lusted after you for years and then finally when i have you it's no fun for me so i may as well bother you know the lusting after was the fun part we've kind of almost made that taboo um unacceptable you know if i i, I can it's okay to lust after it you can lust after my wife, but you can never have her. Never have them. Wow. And where, if we look at that energy, what if you were willing to have clients lusting after what you can give them as a, whatever it is that you offer, you know, mm -hmm. the coaching, facilitation, classes, whatever, or whatever other business you have clients, you Catering. sell them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whatever it is, you know, someone lusting after your cakes. It's like, mm. what if you could really use that? I mean, let's face it. That's what window dressing is about, isn't it? Surely yeah. you go into a shop and they yeah. dress the window so that you look at that and go, I really want that. Yes. Where can we really tap into that energy so that, you know, so me as a coach, where can I be so inspiringly delicious that people kind of lust after the, what it is they can get out of a session from me? Ooh, I love that, Alan. So, universe, show me, <laughs> show me the energy of lust. Show me how I can use that to my advantage to create something even greater in my life and the world. Uh, <laughs> that's like, because everything is just an interesting point of view, isn't it? You know, I think you know if we have a our point of view creates our reality. So if lust for you is a bad thing it's something that you will always avoid but if lust for you is is an energy that you can call upon just like when you have a pencil case in your pencil case you might have scissors and felt tip pens and pencils and you know blah blah, blah you know all that or you go into a kitchen there's different utensils what if lust is just an energy that is just another energy that you can use to create something and there is no right or wrong with it yeah yeah what if lust isn't about that you have to follow through on something. What if lust is a part of that energy that gets you to the point of, of, of really exploring those possibilities? I read this fabulous article once about this woman who was, um, her, she and her husband had been, you know, their sex life had kind of gone a bit kind of stale and dry. And so what she, they would, they, cause they were really open with each other. And then she decided they went out together to kind of look at different women and kind of lust after them. So that when they got home, their sex was really kind yes. of a lot more fun because her husband was turned on and he was turned on by his wife being there with him so he could kind of talk about what was turning him on with these people. And that energy of lust there, uh, you know, I just think when you use it in that way can be a huge amount of, um, it takes a huge amount of vulnerability to be able to be like that. Yeah. So, and, and so what, and now talk about what you saw as the value of that for their relationship. Cause a lot of people, this is like one of the meltdown points. You right. know, there's, and, and this is a, I, for me, what I see in this kind of context is that this is a place where lust can actually be like a huge um, contribution to people's relationship. Well, I um, think, yeah, I, I think it can. I think for, for me, there is a sense of vulnerability and there's a sense of willingness to really drop your barriers and be everything that you are without any kind of judgment. And I'm yeah. not saying that every, that's going to work for everyone. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, in some ways, Bill, Bill and I have an advantage because we 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 are we know we fancy the same sex, <laughs> so we can go out and look at different men and go, "Oh, you know, he's really good looking." Or, or, although conversely, I could quite happily go out with a, with a woman and go, "Actually, yeah, she's really attractive," or she's you know, I could do that with another man. So 
who who likes women um it wouldn't necessarily turn me on but i can see what the attraction is so for me i think there is that level of intimacy that level of openness and i think it can be a lot of fun yeah you can find out all sorts of things about what turns your partner on exactly you know, i like the way she's walking or i like the clothes that she's wearing or yeah. i like the way that she kind of she moves her hips or her body or whatever you know it, and <sighs> And when your partner or you would be saying this, it's not about, it doesn't come from the, the space or the energy of, because I don't like these things about you. Yes, yeah. it's not about, I want it's that. It's not about a comparison. Is. It's more, mm. and, and this is where it's like, if we could allow ourselves to really, as you say, be vulnerable and be really honest with ourselves and our, our playful other, um, it could really bring so much information and awareness to bear. You know? How much fun could you have? You, yes, right? And you don't ever have to, to take on a third for your, nope. you know, your duo. You, it's just really about looking at the energies that are fun and generative and that actually spark that desire and spark that lust. And, you know, what is it? Where is the turn on? And then asking those energies to show up for you and your playful other, um, you know, you're, you're adding that into the recipe, but it doesn't mean you have to ask that person or those people to, you know, come and participate in anything physical with you guys. And this right. is where I think a lot of people get kind of squeamish, you know, um, cause we go into these things about, well, but then they'd be fantasizing about this other person when we're having sex or then blah, blah, blah. And it's, it's, it doesn't have to be black or white quite like that, you know? <laughs> No. There to be honest, if someone is going to to lust out, you know, is going to imagine someone else when you're having sex, they're going to do it whether you've been out exactly. together or not. And exactly, you know, is that more about your own fear than what is that really happening, yeah. Elena, Elena Spahina, What, where is the turn on? Love what that. turns you on? I think you know what does turn you on. You know me. You know for me. I love to see a guy wearing, I think you call them joggers, mm -hmm. tracksuit bottoms, as we call them over trackies. And, you know, I like to see a guy wearing those. And, you know, that, that for me is, is kind of a real turn on for me. And Bill, Bill knows that. And we've mm -hmm. always kind of had that joke that I will spot the bulge in the trousers and he doesn't. Because... <laughs> Because for me, it's, it's, you know, and I do lust after that. I do desire that. I do find that attractive. I do yeah. find it, you know, and I find it fun. It doesn't mean to say I'm going to go and jump into bed with every man who's walking down the exactly. street. Exactly. You know, it's like, because exactly. the energy is just not right. But it's like, I'm willing to play with that. Yeah. And so what, what would your life be like if you're willing to play with the energy of lust with yeah. everything you choose? And what, I'm just getting a sense of the contribution that could be to bodies. Yeah. Like to our bodies, as well as to the bodies that you might be looking at and lusting after. And, and be willing to receive the energy that actually does turn you on. What contribution could that be to other bodies? And again, with you, you know, with absolutely no expectation or requirement that you ever go say hi to those people. You know, if you want to, that's certainly an option, but it's not like that isn't even necessary. It's just about like enjoying the energy of that. Well, it's interesting because I, I wonder as you talk about bodies and the contribution that can be, you know, we talked about universe, show me, um, you know, the energy of lust. What if we ask our body, hey, body, show me, what do you say, body, what do you know about lust? Hey, body, what do you... And, Oh, that's interesting. I'll come on to that in a minute. Oh, my head's just gone, gone. And, you know, it's like, you know, body, where, where would you like to use the energy of lust more? But also, when that, when that energy of lust becomes the frustration and the, you know, when it's been kind of taken to its nth degree, if you cut off your awareness to, to lust, you're not then allowing yourself the awareness of when someone is lusting after you, Mm -hmm. And you could put yourself in a position where, you know, something happens that surprises you. Because remember, if we talk about the denial aspect, which often can be the turn on, which makes people desire you even more, you know, they actually, they talk about, you know, they, you know, the more you reject a man, the more he desires you kind of thing. Mm -hmm. 
in my experience, that doesn't work for me, but um, I know for some people it does. <laughs> and um, it's almost like if you cut off your, your awareness of any lust energy, you're not going to be aware of when someone is projecting lust at you. Mm-hmm. And that's when you get tripped over. So, but, but coming back to the whole body thing, body, what do you know about lust? Yeah. How do you like to use that more? What else is, yeah, what, what do you know? Body, what do you know about lust that I haven't acknowledged? <laughs> I, I know that's just like whoop. I'm writing these down we like to catch some of the yummy bits <laughs> okay. oh. so, I love yeah. that I love that body what do you know about lust mm-hmm. yeah because there is really like there's such a yumminess here for me and and I probably like this topic started to pop several days ago and the moment it showed up it was a very different way than I had ever even considered about a, a playing with the energy of lust. Cause I had always had like that point of view or just, I had adopted that point of view that, um, you know, you were supposed to not have it. You were, it was something that was not a, a contribution. And no, now I'm that. looking at what a fantastic contribution it actually can be. And, and, you know, what could we be willing to let ourselves have that with our, our playful other? when we have a playful other whether that's for you know overnight or a month or 10 years like what could we allow that to be in the relationship and i wonder if that's part of where we could you know you and i had a conversation about Mm -hmm. (laughs) topsy-turvy a while back the roles that we play with sex it's like is that part of where we could incorporate um what we know our body likes to do and and also what we're aware of that our partner really likes you know the the things that might turn on their body as well so do you put a french maid outfit on or do you draw a hot bath and surround it with rose petals and candlelight or do you you know all of these it's just so fascinating to me i'm seeing this in a completely different way Well, we physicalize lust, don't we? Again, it comes back to that, you know, if it is just an energy, what if you just want to experience the energy of it? And isn't it flattering to have someone desire you, no matter who it is? But I think we know it's okay for people I find attractive to desire me. If anybody else finds me, desires me, then no, that's bad and wrong. Right. Wow. And how many people in the world have that point of view? You know, because... I don't like the thought of someone I don't find attractive desiring me. Well, Mm -hmm. hey, get used to it, people. You know, really, you know. What if you're just fucking gorgeous? What if you're just amazingly sexy? And would you be willing to own that? (laughs) I mean, I have to say, I did used to feel really uncomfortable with women who would express, and people do it on Facebook now. Even now I get people expressing, oh, you're really sexy, Ellen, and blah, blah, blah. And... Even now, there is still that slight discomfort of um, uh, this this kind of um, almost like pressure from these people to perform hmm. with. I know it's really interesting because, and I, of course, if a man expressed that to me, I would immediately know what to do because I would feel comfortable with that. And I would be happy to say no very politely. But with women, it's almost like I don't want to hurt their feelings. I don't know how to say, actually, I'm not interested in you. Or can I just receive and go, thank you very much? What a fabulous question. Yeah. Because, you know, I was, at a, I was at a class once, actually. And this woman, it was very clear from one of the participants, the minute she showed up, that she, there was this attraction from her to me. And I, it, it, it was almost like predatory. And on the last day, she <laughs> she grabbed me and kind of started licking my ear. And, you know, it was I was really uncomfortable. The lust and the desire and the kind of claws into me that I felt from this person was like the over physicalization of lust for me. That was yeah. there was no question there. There was no invitation. It was a real force energy. Yeah. So I wonder if lust is can be more of an invitation than a force well yeah I, I think that's part of what you just were saying there was no question there no you know there's just this projection it's when we're projecting our expectation of what that energy is supposed to create or be that's a very different uh way that it lands in someone else's universe um and it limits the possibilities that we can play with 
But when yeah. we're in the question, like, oh, what would it be like to play with that energy? What would it be like to, you know, it doesn't even have to involve, like you said, it doesn't ha ever have to go into a physical expression. It's just, are we willing to play with being aware of, oh, this energy, wow, and then acknowledge it. Whoa, this energy showed up and it's kind of yummy or it's kind of not yummy, whichever the case may be. And then let what you know really be revealed to you. Mm. And it's interesting. Wendy's put in the chat room here, you know, everyone has not everyone has sexualized energy that's overt enough for others to be aware of. Exactly. Uh, yes and no. I, my point of view is if you're willing to be aware, then you'll always be aware of everything. And some people don't sexualize energy. But I think also some energy, you know, it kind of is sexy. And when we try to repress that sexualization of it is when it will come bursting out like that woman did. I think what she probably does in much of her life is repress that so that it does come bursting out the minute that she sees someone who is willing to initially to kind of just to receive that kind of. Yes, I, I get I get that too. Some people exude it and others yeah. repress it. Um, and I was just kind of getting a sense of like, how are we willing to wear, oops, I just dropped my tablet. How are we willing to wear our sexual energy? Yeah. Where, you know, where would it be the greatest contribution? You know, I think, you know, so, um, so for me, something like a, a gay pride march, not that I've done one for years, you know, there are people just kind of exuding this um, kind of sexy energy. And it is all about kind of intimacy with other people. And by that, I don't necessarily mean having sex. Intimacy for me is that kind of real communion with people and that willingness to share and maybe have a hug. And yeah, you might even kiss them up. It doesn't mean say you're going to jump their bones. That's the desiree sex, um, uh, lusty energy for me. And, you know, and then there might be a time when you go on a, you know, a march, which is ban the nuclear bomb. That's perhaps not, <laughs> not the kind of march that I would go on and I would kind of exude the lust. In your rainbow pants. <laughs> yeah, unless, unless I had a lust for no nuclear weapons. Again, I'm using that energy from the, from the desire perspective. You know, I have a desire for there to be no requirement because if, if there was no judgment in the world, would we need nuclear bombs? Mm -hmm. Just saying. Mm -hmm. You know, a place that this comes up for me too is like, I, I know that that energy starts to move when I'm around horses right? and, and playing with horses and start like in nature, I can walk out onto the property that I'm on here at the moment and and there's just this turn on. It's just, if I'm willing to receive the sun coming through the trees and the breezes blowing and the birds mm -hmm. and the critters that are around, you know, all of that and, and the sounds from off in the distance, you know, there is something about that that my body receives so much from. It is so yeah, that can be quite an intimate energy, can't it? You know, if you and you said there is that desire to um, have intimacy with you, you know, a lust for intimacy with you that the world has, that we will often try and force away. And you know, what does the earth know about lust? Mm -hmm. What does the earth know about it? And uh, yeah. <laughs> that brings up like the magnetism of the elements you know there are elements that strongly magnetize other elements and then there are some elements that strongly repel other elements so isn't mm -hmm. it interesting our bodies you know we are what carbon and you know calcium and magnesium and all of that and and so at a at an elemental level even like there is could, could we play with that curiosity you know would we be willing to just see what we're drawn to and what is drawn to us, you know? Well, it's interesting because Liam Phillips at the moment is doing some calls on elementals and being a steward of the earth. So, um, you know, second call this week, um, the first call was, was utterly brilliant. Um, and it would, yeah, he, he's such, he's such a talented person when it comes to kind of earth energy and kind of, um, talking to entities and stuff and you know just that, that whole thing around when you are being a steward of the earth where and where does the lust energy the desire that kind of that potency to create change 
you know, what does the earth know about that? Especially with this elementals, you know, where are the, where's the pull from the different elements towards your body and the earth where your body and your body perhaps knows it was like the homeopath, homeopathics, uh-huh. isn't it? You, you can walk into a shop and your body will take, your body will lust, let's put it that way, after all the minerals and elements that it requires in a health food shop that you don't necessarily have to ingest because yeah. it's the vibration. So where are we ignoring the lust draw from the earth and the elements that is actually a detriment to our body by resisting it rather than just going, wow, I, as you said, I'm going to go and lay in nature and be turned on in the grass. Because when you're turned on, you're willing to receive. Mm-hmm. And I so like, it's that simultaneity of what we're being and what we're receiving. Like, so we're mm-hmm. gifting. Like, so I wonder if part of this is, are we willing to be a gift? Like, are we willing to really be the contribution that we actually are like it's not something we really have to work hard at do you know i hear how can lust be a gift yeah isn't that interesting resistance and reactions how can lust be a gift it's just a bad wrong thing it's disgusting it's just just disgusting no i couldn't possibly wow wow and so what do we really know and where are we aware of the lie Mm. Yeah. What lies have we been told about lust? Yeah. That we've tried to make real. Mm. So if everything that lust is, like, so everything we've defined lust as that it isn't, and everything that it is that we've never allowed ourselves to know that it is, Mm -hmm. where can we choose beyond the points of view that have never allowed us to know that or have that? Like all of, so everything that that is, <laughs> everything that's bringing up, would you all, would each of us, could each of us be willing in our own time and place and way wow. to go beyond everything we've bought about the definition of lust and, and the limitation, wherever we're using it as a limitation, wow, and <laughs> creating limitation with it. Golly dogs, could you could you let that go? Could you could you get curious and let yourself really see what that is for you? Because I I really get that this is something that's unique to each of us. You know, our own expression of our the energy of us is unique to us. And so um lust is one of those energies that we get to experience it the way we each uniquely experience it and we get to be it the way each of us uniquely already is it, you know? Um, wow. Mm. That's such a cool energy to play with. <laughs> it really is. There's such a lightness. Um, like I just, I'm, I'm, this is funny to me in a really cool way, you know, that I'm, this is such a different way to play with lust is it's such an it's I really get the invitation. It's like such an invitation energy because it's sort of like that door opener. If we didn't have lust, if we weren't willing to let ourselves have lust or be lusting or be lusty, would we ever be moved toward our curiosity of desire, our curiosity of sex, our curiosity of, um seduction our curiosity of you know that all of those things that oh in in conventional reality and society are the things we're not supposed to talk about or or play with in public and yet what i'm aware of is that those are really essential and and really key components to creating our lives. We've just made them so wrong. And, you know, I'm, I'm still getting this. Uh, I'm still aware of this. There is this really strong movement that lust only ever leads to rape and sadness and torture. Um, so that, you know, it's almost like, um, you know, we go back to um, lust having no part in sex at all 
It's the, you know, the sheet between the two of you so you don't actually touch the women covering their bodies so that the men don't become overly lustful because men can't control their lust. And lust is something that's there to be controlled. It's something that is there to be uh, tolerated to a point, um, you know, and anyone who allows their lust to get out of control. Wow. Is bad and wrong. And yeah. where does that even come from? And well, it doesn't matter where it came from. The point is, is it true for you? For me, that feels really heavy. That is heavy. Um, there's, there's a, in I, one of the chapters that I, one of the books I contributed to, um, I was writing about the judgment of sex. And a part of that conversation was around beauty. And how one of the things that I have noticed is the res the way we respond to beauty. Um, a lot of people go into a reaction to the things they find beautiful rather than being able to respond to what that beauty creates, you know, what that creates in their universe. And, and that's one of the kind of segues into these, this, this thing with lust and desire and, um, there's this weirdness that we've created around how we respond to what we find attractive. And mm -hmm. I kind of get that there's this programming that a lot of us go through um, in a way that we are taught to respond uh, that isn't really how we would organically respond. And like what we're told is that the response or the reaction becomes this undesirable thing. But what if that doesn't have to be the case? Mm. Like what if you could simply receive that beauty, whatever it is for you that is beautiful, whether that's a rose or a beautiful fall foliage, you know, scenery that you're driving through in the Northeast or um, whether that's a love letter or whether that's someone calling across the street that you're, you're beautiful or whether you're seeing a movie that is just moving you all over the, you know, it's changing your world. How are you willing to allow yourself to respond? Are you willing to allow yourself to respond as you like what is truly going on for you rather than triggering into these learned responses? And that's another place that I'm aware we get really tripped up. Yeah, and I really get as well that the whole lust thing has been so folded, manipulated, stapled, you know, into something that it's not, that we often misidentify lust as the narcissistic need to have, I will have everything that I want, I will have my lusts kind of met which actually has nothing to do with lust at all, which for me is a kind of a gentle, lust for me is a very gentle, if I tap into that now, it's a flowing energy, it's an invitation, it's a receiving, it's a gifting, it's, it's all of those things for me. Yeah. And that, again, I think for me is the higher harmonics of um, physical desire that we, we kind of, for many people, relate it to into something much more kind of free flowing and you know does the universe lust for us to ask questions does the universe lust for us to be ourselves does the universe get turned on when we choose to be everything that we are without judgment with no point of view that I makes wonder. me smile <laughs> I wonder you know I you know it was oh it's the universe it's inanimate um, okay interesting point of view i don't get that for me i don't get the end the universe is inanimate at all i think it's always expanding and it has a lust for expansion yeah a desire a joy a, yeah mm -hmm, an intimacy so really what this brings me to is that it's kind of the question of how are we willing to engage how are we willing to engage ourselves engage each other how are we willing to meet ourselves how are we willing to meet another person another body how are we willing to meet nature how are we willing to meet our lover mm -hmm. and how are we willing to meet this universe 
and that's yeah. just like this yeah. open you know field of possibilities that and and can can we allow ourselves will we allow ourselves to be in that space of curiosity and everything that that includes including the energies of lust desire seduction all being of lusted. Them, and being <laughs> lusted and being desired and being seduced yeah how are we willing to engage each other and if you are in a relationship with a, a primary partner are you willing to truly engage that person and are you willing to be the space for them to in, truly engage you so let them see you yeah wow that, that, <laughs> I, mean, I love that let them see you yeah it always reminds me of the, the film avatar you know when they talk about i yeah. see you yeah and they mean i see all of you and i have no point of view i see you yeah yeah wow and and what if that's a part like i'm i can perceive like that that lust energy if we weren't if we gave it any other name you know whatever we want to call it that that is a part of that because the it's that opening and letting the barriers down and getting vulnerable and be willing to be seen be willing to see others and be willing to be seen and and not make any of it have to mean something specific just really be in the question and the curiosity of what could this be what could this create whether that's a conversation or a project or an evening of copulation or whatever form it takes whatever mm -hmm. expression it shows up as so wow who knew <laughs> who knew we'd go there and we're at the top of the hour already so I like, know. <laughs> wow um so you have some really cool things coming up and I, you, you mentioned one right before we went on the air and I would just love for you to share folk with folks if you would like to um, take a moment to do that. God, do I? Um, your, your kick ass. <laughs> oh yeah, I have, I do have uh, kick ass coaching. Um, so yeah, I'm, I have a special deal on for the whole of December actually um, where you can have three sessions for the price of two or two sessions for the price of one, which can be taken anywhere between now and the end of January, but you do need to pay before the end of December. So if you want to have a session with me, then, you know, or two sessions with me or three sessions with me for the price of two, you can go to my website and on the coaching page, um, there's a, there's some buttons there. Um, and I would really would, you know, uh, Liam Phillips is doing this kind of um, talk to the elementals call that I would really highly recommend if you feel an affinity to the earth and feel like you're a steward of the earth. It is something that these calls are, are, are you know, the first one was brilliant and I get that the next two will be as well. So that's, and we've got our radio show on Monday which, what are we talking about? I can't know what we're talking about. A oh. round of possibilities. Yeah, what's your show? recipe for misery, which we're pre-recording tonight. <laughs> I love that. How did I get so lucky? Misery? Mm. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes, if you have never played with Alan, folks, this is just, I'm, I'm inviting you. Um, I love to play with Alan, in case anyone, if, if you don't know that about me, it's one of the things I adore, um, is that he's willing to go anywhere, talk about anything, play with any energy, and just see what's there, and and be a facilitator of your awesomedness. Um, yeah. And thank you There's for that. Thank I won't go wherever you want to go. Yes. It's not an issue. He has no point of view. And Lily's chiming in. Um, and if you want to play with Rhonda, uh, we always we always talk about um, her beautiful Potency Is My Game radio show airs on Wednesday mornings on a2zen.fm. Um, you can find Ooh. her at 10 a.m. Uh, Central. Sorry. I'm sorry, 10 a.m. Eastern. And I'm not sure what she's talking about this week, but I know that December is a month of desire for her topics on the radio show. And then on Friday, I'll get right back to you. Well, let's go to you. Back to you, Alan. What, what did you? Sorry, say? I just remember you and I are doing the Bring Your Christmas List to and Life. So I was going to say yes. All oh, right. So you're already there. <laughs> yes. If you go to Choosing Beyond Beyond on Facebook, you can yeah. actually find another collaborative project that is in progress with myself and Alan and we are talking about bringing your Christmas list to life. Um, we've had some conversations on this show about Christmas list, and then uh, Alan and I also had a conversation about 
Christmas list. And um, we're just playing with the energies of really allowing what we desire to show up in a way that we could never have imagined, wouldn't have even dared to imagine, and, and yet is so amazingly incredible. And uh, I'm having some of my own experiences with that. So I'll be sharing those on the Choosing Beyond Beyond Facebook page. Um, you can find the events, you can see the videos, it's all free. We're not emailing any reminders to anyone about any of it. Just go to the Choosing Beyond Beyond Facebook page, and you will find all of the ways you can engage those those energies. Um, and uh, Alan's web address will be in the text below this video for those of you who are seeing it as a replay. Um, so you can also play with me on Fridays on my show, Living Well, uh, on a2zen.fm. And this week I am talking about Are Your Beliefs Deceiving You? Always. So it's going to be, <laughs> it might be an interesting conversation. I don't know. Um, and as usual, we will see you back again next Tuesday. We're going to be talking about sex on a Tuesday because we just love doing that. Um, for Sexually Speaking, Rhonda Burns will be back to play some more. And who knows, Alan might be here again as well. Hmm, how much I fun can well you Make it yeah. a threesome. I love it. Um, so whatever you do, make it a fantastic week. Uh, if you are celebrating holidays, whatever holidays, however you're celebrating them, very happiest, merry, and fully blessed holidays to all of you. Um, yeah. Alan, thank you for coming to play. It is a you're joy. Welcome. It is a pleasure. You. Thank you for inviting me. And, and thank you all for playing. Yes. Thank you, everyone, for coming to play with us. Um, we'll see you next week, guys. Get lusty. Bye-bye. <laughs> Lots of lust for life. <laughs>